since we will be doing this every year, this will be going to the person that gives us hope for humanity more than anybody else that really embodies the word hope. Um, we will be naming this award going for the Kenneth Mitchell Hope Award for Kenneth Mitchell because, well, you know why, because he's the most glorious human or Klingon ever. <laughs> um, so here to present the very first Kenneth Mitchell Hope Award, everybody, please welcome a Klingon in her own right. You can just call her Mother. <laughs> hey, Mary. Yay. Hello, I have unmuted myself. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> Yay. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for doing this. This is Thank awesome. You so much. We really I'm appreciate just, I'm, you. I'm very honored to do this. You honor me to bestow an honor as chancellor <laughs> and as human. <laughs> and uh, you look like you've recovered from the cruise well. That was a pretty crazy cruise. <laughs> it was a crazy cruise. It was yeah. a, a great crazy cruise. But <laughs> all right, everybody at home is like, you guys, we've heard about the cruise for two weeks. Can we go ahead <laughs> and get to the honor? So, yeah. uh, Mary, uh, yes. the floor is yours. Please go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you all again for inviting me to be a part of of launching the Kenneth Mitchell Hope Award. It's just really. Um, a very uh, significant and important award, uh, I think, in, in regards to the entire Trek community embodying hope and love uh, within this community is so important. So I'm just really grateful that it is an award that will be bestowed on, on many henceforth, um, but particularly this being the first uh, one that, of course, I'm getting to give to Ken himself. And uh, Ken, my friend, my Klingon brother, yeah, I bring him on. By one of oh. here he is, ladies and gentlemen, and species oh, of all yes. kinds. Mr. Are we popping him in. Kenneth Mitchell. Wonderful. All right. One of my absolute favorite human beings in the whole galaxy. I've written a little something because I adore Ken and I wanted to make sure some of my thoughts and feelings uh, didn't get lost in emotion. <laughs> um, so here we go. Um, there are so many different things that I could say about Ken. Um, I teased him in a text earlier that this was going to be a roast, but he knows <laughs> as well as I do that I don't have the excellent comedic prowess he does that allows him to perfectly roast Jason Isaacs whenever humanly possible. Uh, <laughs> a skill that I, I admire from afar. Um, but it is true. Anyone who knows Ken knows how deviously hilarious he can be, whether we were together on set and he was making me laugh off my prosthetic uh, by pretending to be a creepy Santa in his Coleshaw costume, among many other silly Klingon pranks. Um, or if we were at a convention on a panel and he busted out fully embodied Klingon mid-panel or his prime Lorca impersonation that we've all come to know and love, <laughs> getting Jason once again. Um, but Ken has always been able to surprise and delight me with his own unique sense of humor and heart. Anytime he starts to tell a sweet, genuine story, I'm always rightfully on guard for the punchline. But that's the thing about Ken and his humor is his heart is always right there, present, and open. His humor gives us hope by making us reflect on the absurdity and the joy of our existence. And I've been reflecting on hope in knowing that I was presenting the Kenneth, Kenneth Mitchell Hope Award. And I think that we often categorize hope as something that looks far into the future. We hope for a better day, a greater time or experience to escape to or dream of. But in knowing and loving Ken before and throughout his journey with ALS, I have learned that hope is more about being in the moment, being present with those around you and letting them know how much they mean to you as often as you can. I see that hope in Ken, his wife, Susan, his beautiful, intelligent children, Lila and Cal. I see that in the powerful and expansive group of friends and family that surround him on a regular basis. And um, I am just so humbled to know Ken. 
He inspires me to be a better person in the world because he believes we have the ability to be the best versions of ourselves, love each other fiercely and fearlessly, even if there are obstacles that make us feel like we're too small to make any significant change. But we can, and we will. And that is hope. That is love. And that is Kenneth Mitchell. So without further ado, may I present the first ever Kenneth Mitchell Hope Award to Kenneth Mitchell. Boy, I wish we had a live audience for that. <laughs> just, just cheer and go nuts. Uh, but in the live chat right now, you guys can't see it, but there, there's a flurry of hearts for the both of you. Uh, Kenneth, I, I don't know. I believe you may have had something prepared, right? I believe it's coming. Thank you very much. I am grateful and incredibly honored. I love you all. Thank you very much. I am grateful and incredibly honored. I love you all. Let me tell you a story. I love you, Ken. Let me tell you a story. And I will start at the end. It was mid-morning during a weekday in early November of 2020. I had just awoken when Jeff, my caregiver and friend, came into my room and told me that there was a package at the front door. I asked him, what is the package? He responded, it's huge. So I repeated, what is it? A slight grin came across his face as he replied, you'll see. Then just as he started to turn away, he shouted over his shoulder, I'll bring it around to the back. I lay in my bed with anticipation, staring out the back door waiting. The moment Jeff entered the backyard with the package, a grand smile filled my face as I knew exactly what it was and who it was from. It was a giant tree with a burlap root ball, 10 feet high, but it wasn't just any tree. It was a tree from William Shatner. Two weeks prior to this moment, Mr. Shatner had reached out and asked if I wanted to have a chat with him over Zoom. It's not every day the captain makes such a generous offer, so I happily accepted. I had only had brief interactions with Bill before this, so I was very excited and curious about how our conversation would unfold. I imagined that we would talk about the current movies and TV shows that we each love, his charity, or perhaps delve into some Star Trek lore. However, it turned out to be so much more than expected. In fact, it ended up being one of the most meaningful and powerful conversations I have ever had. He was very curious about my upbringing in Canada, which we both have in common. He wanted to hear about my time at summer camp in Northern Ontario and my studies in landscape architecture at the University of Guelph. We spoke about our shared love of nature and the connection we all share. The conversation led to his curiosity of my recent illness with ALS. I opened up to him, which flowed into a deep discussion about our personal mortality and what happens to us after we die. We were both very open and vulnerable, and it turned out that we share a similar philosophy about our transcendence into nature. I don't want to divulge all of the details, but I will let you know what he wrote on the card accompanying the package. Dear Kenneth, maybe you want to be a tree too. Thank you very much. Very fondly, Bill. This tree, which now stands tall in my backyard, is more than just a beautiful memory of our conversation and shared love of nature. For me, the tree became a symbol of how gracious and special our Star Trek family is. I realized we are to people, with 800 episodes of Star Trek between us. Yet here we are, connected and curious about each other. That is the beauty of Star Trek. Of course, it all begins with the writing, the characters, and their relationships displaying powerful themes of love, hope, discovery, inclusion, courage, curiosity, exploration, honor, sacrifice, service, diplomacy, trust, and science. However, I believe the essence of Star Trek goes beyond the material and transcends into our lives. This is the greatest gift that Star Trek gives us, how we connect with one another outside of the show. I am incredibly grateful for the friendships from my colleagues and the fans. 
I could tell you a magical story about each and every one of my castmates and alumni or relate dozens of special interactions I've shared with the fans. We are a family, and I take great comfort in this unique phenomenon. In dealing with my mortality, I feel comforted knowing that the characters I've brought to life will live on. I'm blessed to have learned from them the good and bad, and I'm proud of what they might offer others for years to come. However, the most precious benefit of being a part of Star Trek is the experience making it and all the people I have met along the way. The fabric of the Star Trek family is the true gift. Aside from sharing in characters, stories, and adventure, the common thread is each other. The special connection we have, this gives me the ultimate solace along my journey, the friendships and connections forged, knowing these memories will live on along with the characters. Thank you for this gift. And who knows, maybe some of you will one day breathe the oxygen from my leaves or lean on my trunk, which stands tall on the grounds of the new Starfleet Academy. Beside the ginkgo, there will be a plaque that reads my favorite quote from Gene Roddenberry. In a very real sense, we are all aliens on a strange planet. We spend most of our lives reaching out and trying to communicate. If during our whole lifetime, we could reach out and communicate with just the people, we are indeed very fortunate. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Kenneth. I'm going to bring everybody on right now because I know it's not okay. easy being <laughs> all by yourself, just two people with a camera in your face. But um, you're an amazing human, Kenneth, and we really, really, really appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us and join us today. Sorry, we're all taking a moment to compose ourselves. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, that was absolutely so beautiful. beautiful. That was very we love amazing. you, Ken. We love you, man. Thank you. Thank you for being an inspiration to all of us. Uh, yeah, we love you, Kenneth. Uh, everybody in the live chat right now was going nuts. Tons of hearts, tons of tears, Our tons of love. Tears. That's what I saw a lot of. And... Uh, <laughs> Mary already Lots knew what smiles. was coming. Probably she's like, "Do you guys just wait? He's gonna, he he's always gonna bring down the house. He's either gonna make you laugh or he's gonna make you cry. It's gonna be tears of joy yeah. or it's gonna be tears of laughter. It's gonna be something." And he's both, always both. Both. Yeah. both together. We're both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Magic that's of that. Ken. <laughs> yeah. Um, before Your we was beautiful too, Mary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, thank yeah. you both. I had a very great source of inspiration. It, it all flowed very easily trying to think of things to say about Ken. <laughs> um, well, that was really cool. Kenneth, thank you so much for doing that. My, I, I, I saw him doing stand-up comedy. If any of you have ever seen <laughs> Kenneth doing stand-up, I was like, oh my God, it would be so great if he could. And he's like, I got something better. Don't worry. <laughs> you thought that was good. You thought that was good. You wait. Hold Kenneth, my beer. <laughs> you're you're an angel among us, and it's an absolute honor that we are able to bestow you with the Kenneth Mitchell Hope Award, and that from here on out, uh, the person that embodies hope in humanity for us the most will receive the Kenneth Mitchell Hope Award, and we are all fortunate for being able to someday breathe the oxygen uh, mm. from your tree. And you're just an amazing person. If anybody has any mm -hmm. final words before we go, I'm trying to buy you guys some time so we could compose ourselves. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, can I just say, Ken, you have been such a, a gift from the very first day that I met you with Aaron in um, England, in Dortmund. Um, it, it, and it's, you've been a riot. <laughs> you've been a riot. And, and so, and I thank you for your friendship and the hugs, great hugs. <laughs> and, um, and, and thank you for, for being such an inspiration because you are, um, you will always hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> Always. I've had a better recipient for the Hope Award or love or anything. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. 
Well, we're just going to keep thanking you and telling you how much we love you, Kenneth. So <laughs> uh, we will continue to do so in social media and in videos, future videos. But uh, thank you so much, Kenneth. We love you. And Mary, thank you so much. We love you. Uh, we appreciate you guys both taking the time for this. And we hope yeah. to see you soon. Love you all. Thank you so much for, for creating this award, for honoring you Ken, too. and for letting us be a part of the first ever Lappy Awards. Is that what we're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. We've teased <laughs> that Mike McMahon calls it something different, but you'll have to stick around and find out what that is. Oh, no. All right. The Slappy Awards? Nope. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. thank you very much. Thank see you, you soon. All. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary.